Hey you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. Is, no? Okay, you need help me on this. Jeff, is, is Texas part of the south? It's south from things north of us, so yes, it is south. I usually just, <laughs> I, I, I usually just say Texas. Yes. <laughs> Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the great state of Texas. More specifically, Glen Rose? Glen Rose, Texas. And uh, we are joined by Creates today and John from Exploration Unknown. And we are at the Creation Evidence Museum. Evidence of creation. Uh, I've been to several creation museums around, uh, around the country. Uh, some of them have different philosophies. I've seen, you know, dinosaurs on Noah's Ark and, and whatnot. Um, I don't know the, the exact belief of this creation museum, but we will learn together. So follow me. I wonder if at the Creation Museum they're called Velasa Raptures. Have all these petrified objects. There's even a petrified Texas right here. This is kind of unusual. If anyone in your group is sick, please do not enter the museum. You guys sick? <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. I I have a bit of a cough. Don't tell them. I guess here's some evidence that dinosaurs and humans live together. They're saying this is a dinosaur footprint, this whole thing. And that this is a uh, human footprint. You can see the little toes there. So I guess that a human stepped in the wet dinosaur footprint. Now it may seem random to have an 1896 piano here, but it is kind of just explaining the, the wisdom and artwork of man. And here's kind of the... Uh, the, the argument here says the evolution model begins with seven assumptions. Non-living elements gave rise to living elements. Spontaneous generation occurred only once. Virus, bacteria, plants, and animals are all related. Single cell life forms give rise to multiple uh, cell life forms. Various invertebrates, phyla are related. Invertebrates gave rise to invertebrates. Uh, inverse gave rise to vertebrates. Fish gave rise to amphibians, to reptiles, to birds, to mammals, to primates, to man. And the creation model only has one assumption that is the overwhelming complexity found in living system. Our nature requires a designer for its origin. So a living cell, you have to show the complexity of that. Uh, this shows a, a brain, a mouse trap, and it's fossil. I don't quite understand the symbolism there. And this is the world before the uh, Noah's Ark and the flood. You can see there's a lot more land than water. Oh, there's more water over here. But uh, and there's the, I guess that's the core of the earth. A solid core. And I guess this is kind of showing different, uh, different accomplishments of man. I think that you know, the argument is you know the the, the, the the brain of the man very complicated. There's a little replica of the Lucy statue right here, and then they have kind of a evolution scene here. I guess they're showing that these pieces of evolution. There's big X's next to them. I guess saying they were all. Different types of apes. Just saying that the first true fossil was Homo erectus here. And then my people, the Neanderthal. And then there's the sapiens. Okay, so I guess the argument here is that the Homo erectus, Neanderthal, and human are so similar that they're really all humans. It's interesting, there's like these ancient biblical artifacts and then there's a uh, dinosaur footprint right there supposedly that is a fossilized human finger that's interesting there's a human handprint in uh, in rock I guess the implication there is that it came from a time when dinosaurs were alive and there's some uh, Native American pottery uh, that shows dinosaurs I guess the implication being that they would have seen dinosaurs and known what they looked like Here's an actual sandal print um, with trilobites. So I guess saying that trilobites existed uh, while people were already wearing sandals. And here's some Bibles. Don't know what that axe is up there.
Now this is interesting to say the least. This is a hyperbaric chamber and they're using this to uh, simulate the atmospheric condition of the pre-flood world. So I guess this is, uh, the environment is here, what the world would have been like before Noah's Ark. You see they got some plants back in there. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So I guess this is a Dr. Uh, Bergman that, that's doing this experiment and here's all his qualifications taped to here. He went to Wayne State University. Oh yes, three degrees from Wayne State University. Uh, Bowling Green State University. A certificate from Mensa, showing that he's very smart. And a uh, medical college, so he was a doctor as well. Cause this is like a model of the barometric uh, chamber. These are fake plants, so I guess it's just kind of like a mock-up of what, maybe like a, a, a tube full of pre-flood stuff would look like. Darwinian evolution is a bankrupt religious system that worships natural forces, uh, propped up by artificial supports. It's well illustrated by this broken goddess, Balat, once worshipped by the Phoenicians of Biblos. I mean, it's Dar evolution is not a religion. Whoa, this is uh, some serious shade on Darwin here, saying this letter was uh, written by son of Charles Darwin. It says that he was instrumental in estab establishing the euthanasia movement. Evolution worships the sun millions of years ago. Solar radiation provided the means for stimulation of natural elements. You know, I, I can tell you that um, Darwin does specifically mention God in uh, The Origin of Species. All right, some things just keep popping up. That, I don't understand if it in. Israel is special. There's a menorah for the Israel section. And um, these holograms of fossils. I'm, yeah, I have a little trouble following. Oh, there's the shrouded Turin. I'm not sure what the Misha stone is. Look here, it says satellite photography discovered the sacred name of God in ancient Hebrew etched in the mountains of Beth El Israel. I guess looking at the magnifying glass, um, I guess, I don't know, is that a Hebrew symbol in there? I don't really, I don't, obviously I don't speak Hebrew, I don't understand. Something like just different ancient money. There you go, creationist symphony it says under this giant T-Rex head. I don't know why he's got foliage in his mouth. Is this a vegetarian uh, Tyrannosaurus? I guess it's showing the, the cataclysmic effects that the flood had on the earth. And um, this is Adam and Eve. And Adam looks a lot like uh, Mark Wahlberg. Oh, and he's petting a dinosaur. Wow, there's actual artifacts from Noah's Ark. Uh, research on Mount Arafat. So I guess these are tools that were used to hunt for the Ark. That guy definitely looks like a Ark Hunter. And um, they're saying that that petrified rock is believed to be a piece of Noah's Ark, actually. Oh, there's another wood sample that's believed to be an actual piece of Noah's Ark as well. Now look, there's them finding the Ark right there. Let's see him pointing the Ark up there on top of... Oh, there's the other half of the Ark. I don't know if it's supposed to split in half at some point. I guess this is Mount Ararat, and uh, up on top of the mountain where the Ark was found. There's one and two right there. Those are the two pieces of the Ark. So please do not crawl under the Ark. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Some statues over here. It's a very, very large man. We have a Native American here as well. We got a just a full replica of Noah's Ark. All right, Jeff, what do you think? What do you think of the Creation uh, Museum here? It's very creative. Create, confirmed for creativity. Confirmed for creativity. All right, so let's take a look at this Ark. This would be the fresh water system. Um, some cut out floors on there. You can see the elephants. Oh, elephants and woolly mammoth together. I guess existing at the same time. Move over here to polar bears and penguins. Maybe they should have thrown some ice in there for them. They got some pterodactyls up there in the rafters. 
There's, um, yeah, they're not completely full with animals. Some, some little birds over there. You got a peacock on the stairs. And you got the cattle in here, like farm animals, I guess. And then up here are the dinosaurs. I guess the dinosaurs, you get, they keep up them up here so they don't eat the cattle. Look, see some more uh, dinos back there. And here's the human quarters here preparing some meals. That must be uh, me Noah right there. I'm putting the stegosauruses and the triceratops on the second floor. I'd be worried about them crashing down here. Oh yeah, you can see the little pens made for smaller animals like hamsters and guinea pigs and chinchillas and stuff. Yeah, down here you can see some dinosaurs. There's a big old Spinosaurus down there in the basement. I don't know, can boats have basements? Here's some adorable animals frolicking. Got some badgers over there in the corner. Just here's some food and supplies in these clay barrels. One Noah's son's here. He's, uh, I don't know, he's sweeping? Is that a broom? I see like a puppy and a snake. And he's got a German Shepherd. Yeah, there's like mops and stuff in the background. Oh, there's the Australia section back there. What do you think, John? I think it must have been weird living with T-Rexes and elephants on the ark. This section is the creativity of man. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think a penny farthing bike is really the best uh, example of man's creativity. Um, just kind of showing that man uh, should have just really made the, the two bicycle wheels the same size to begin with. Yeah, I wish I live in a world with purple brontosauruses and lions and lambs that could actually be friends. This is a you know, like fossil layers that they call the wall of truth. I guess up there you see uh, saber tooth tigers and tusks and skulls and tiki's. And uh, as we go down, yeah, you see some human footprints there, the dinosaur bone. There's, uh, oh, there's human footprints even lower than the dinosaurs. So I guess humans were here first before dinosaurs and then continued after the dinosaurs. And it's a colorful dinosaur right there. This is talking about like bird-like dinosaurs saying that uh, they're not necessarily dinosaurs, that they're just birds that happen to have uh, claws and uh, teeth. So John, what? There's, there's, there's a picture of a giant right there yeah, and then there's a giant suit. I don't know man. There's no uh, no label. Oh, you okay? Welcome right. to Creation Evidence WWW. Very vicious looking tiger face. Oh, look at that little, uh, that's a weird looking thing right there. Just another comparison of the two models is the evolution model. You can see, you know, we start with uh, more simple animals evolving into more complicated animals, including different types of men. On the creation model, we don't have any animals. We just have men. This is the first man, the protomeric man with gene superior genetic characteristics, isomeric man, true man isolated with limited gene pool, profermeric man, true man self-isolated by fears and aversion, and cultmeric man, true man in historical context. Hmm. There is a uh, stegosaurus uh, carved into a temple there from uh, 1186. So I guess saying that they would have uh, would have known about dinosaurs back then, even though they hadn't been uncovered yet. These are Inca stones that mention Leviathan. There's a, there's a pot of footprint, fossilized human track, and Permian stone. Acrocanthosaurus. That means high spined lizard, 40 feet long. Many of the dinosaur tracks in the Biloxi River Basin were made by this creature called Acrocanthosaurus. Yeah, they got some good uh, taxidermy dinosaurs here. Little dinosaur eggs there. Okay, so Jeff, yeah, I just, just got a few questions for you. Um, you've been through the Creation Evidence Museum. Uh, so what's true? Is, is creationism, <laughs> creationism or, uh, or evolution real? Which one? Yes, creativity. 
No, 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 not creativity. Creationism. Creativity. Let me let me ask you. Okay, let me let me let me let me word this another way. Um, just out there, just tell everyone in in, in the YouTube. Does God exist? <laughs> so there you have it, the Creation Museum. Yeah, everyone is very much welcome to make their own judgments on uh, their evidence, what they feel about it. Um, I honestly had trouble, kind of trouble uh, following it. Um, the Creation Museum in Kentucky actually maybe a little more straightforward with their path and explaining their creationist views. I do think this has the same views as Ken Ham's, uh, Ken Ham's Creation Museum, Ken Ham's Ark in Kentucky. Uh, so yeah, always fascinating to see different ideas and what different people feel. Uh, so leave a comment down in the comment section. Actually, don't because I can just see people yelling at each other. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the other place I've been to, check the interactive map in the description. Uh, also, if you'd like to support the channel, consider buying a t-shirt. Consider donating to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month. But for now, this one's in the bag.